Operational planning focuses on key day-to-day -day activities that drives the business and has a wider impact on revenue and related functions. It is a holistic view of planning across the business to give insights, make informed decisions, and ultimately drive more profits. Just to share a few key activities that are involved in operational planning. Sales planning, a critical component that focuses on setting sales targets, strategies, and tactics to achieve business revenue goals. Demand and supply planning, determine the number of units needed to be sold to meet revenue targets while understanding market trends and impacts to supply chain to help drive profitability. Project planning, evaluate special projects that help optimize investments and growth in the business. Marketing planning, analyze and plan the right campaign mix to support and align the growth and sales strategy. Here are a few industry examples of where operational planning is used. Retail, inventory planning, customer demand to optimize supply capacity, perhaps for holiday seasons, manage the help manage the cash flow. Healthcare, patient volumes to manage staffing requirements, such as admins and nurses, to service specialists like heart surgeons. Professional services, billable hours by projects for capacity and revenue planning. Next. Financial planning and operation planning are two distinct but interconnected processes within an organization. Alignment is critical to ensure the day-to-day -day activities and your operational plan support the long-term financial growth. Resource allocation. Understanding operational growth strategy is supported by the financial budget and resource plans for staffing and hiring. Performance monitoring. Take operational KPIs such as volume or units to drive impacts to financial plans such as gross margin and EBITDA. Blending Operational and financial planning ensures organizations can achieve short-term goals and track to meet long-term goals together. Next. A few best practices for operational planning. Identify your revenue drivers. Ensure partnership and collaboration between your operation and finance teams. Don't over-engineer with heavy customization. Start small and build visibility between your business partners. Now I hand this over to Phil Williams to demo operational planning with Workday Adaptive. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, so I'm, I'm super excited to sort of dive into Adaptive and actually show some of these ideas in practice um, with what we can do with Adaptive Planning. So um, starting out here, just to sort of set the scene of what we're looking at, Right now, what we're showing is um, an active dashboard in adaptive planning. So this is a dashboard where we've brought in um, a planning sheet that you can actually enter data and plan values for right alongside um, key KPIs and visualizations to show how you're tracking throughout the year. Um, and just a little bit of a, a description of the company that we're gonna use as an example here for this portion of the demo, this is a, uh, a bike manufacturing company um, that uses a revenue plan that's based off a price times quantity framework and product costs are planned using a cost per unit. So the first thing that we're gonna talk through is how we can leverage new functionality in adaptive specifically the machine learning forecaster um, to forecast data. So a, a few reasons of why to use the machine learning forecaster could be um, potentially you want to generate a forecast with high level of granularity. You can see um, in our product revenue sheet, we're planning down to the customer level and the product level, um, but maybe you don't have enough time or resources to go in and select each customer to plan out which products they're buying. Um, you want to have that granularity, but it takes a lot of time and resources to plan at that level. Another reason is potentially you've acquired a new business and 
don't have a, a fully baked forecasting process, but you want to be able to um, spin up some projections based on the actuals data that you brought in. And, and maybe you just want to sort of improve your forecasting accuracy by asking a super smart computer algorithm what they think um, your forecast should be and, and use that to help guide you um, throughout the future. So it's really with, with the new product release coming out uh, September 21st, this machine learning forecaster will be available for you to use. And now we'll walk through the steps of how to use it. So in the uh, ML forecast module, you'll come in here and click new forecast. From here, there'll be a few prompts to fill out um, to create this. The first one is going to be, which plan version are you wanting to populate data in? The next is gonna be which sheet. So I'm gonna select that sheet we were just looking at, the ML product revenue. From there, you'll select which account you want to forecast. So in our case, it's going to be this machine learning units account. And then which levels you want to populate for. So in our example, we're just going to populate for our Fort Worth plant. Um, as you can see, you can plan for multiple levels at the same time just by selecting which ones here. Um, the next few selections you'll need to make is which dates you're populating for plan. In our case, we're going to populate a plan for the full year. I'll select January through December. And then which actuals periods, um, which actuals version and which actuals periods we want to use. So we're going to use our total actuals period or our total actuals version. And then for the period with ML forecast, there's a few um, guidelines that you need to follow for how many actuals periods. So generally, um, you need two to one. So, or sorry, three to two. So if you're forecasting for two years um, of data, you need to have at least three years of plan. Sorry, three years of actuals data. And so I'm going to select 2020, 2021, and 2022. And then with the initial release, there's two algorithms that you can choose from. The first is going to be the NBeats algorithm, which is um, a, a deep learning model trained on public data sets that sort of utilizes general knowledge um, about historical time periods. Um, so this is going to be sort of the, the general algorithm. But if you want an algorithm with a little bit more customizability, you may want to use the profit algorithm, which gives you the option to add um, uh, seasonality. So you can either have yearly, biannually, or quarterly. We'll choose yearly. And then also the profit algorithm lets you include a lever sheet. So if you're um, financial data is closely associated with um, outside data that you may want to incorporate, for example, marketing campaigns or even weather data um, is a common one or potentially some, some broader metrics like a CPI or a GDP or interest rates. We can uh, import that data into Adaptive and actually use it as a lever sheet to help drive that forecast. So once you have all these filled out, all you need to do is hit create, and that will populate the accounts in that sheet. Um, so that's ML Forecaster. So you can see here, um, these, this account is open for data entry. So we're able to import data there. And the next thing, of this demo I'd like to talk about is um, demand planning. So our second step in this process tracker, we have a dashboard set up to um, forecast inventory and variable workforce. So in this first sheet, we're looking at sort of our inventory trend. Um, and you can see we have visualizations that show our beginning inventory balance in addition to purchases we've made throughout the year. 
Um, and we have, again, a sheet in this active dashboard where um, you can plan. So um, we've set up this dashboard with a visualization that shows whether or not we run into um, a shortage throughout the year. And you can see tracking on this visualization in April, based on the units that we um, have projected to be sold, we have um, a shortage that looks like it's coming up. So um, in our plan, we would want to um, forecast an additional purchase that we need to make of inventory, um, specifically in April, the first month that we're running into a shortage. So we can do that from the dashboard here. Um, in this sheet, we can create a new row, select the supplier that we're planning to um, purchase the additional units from. We'll select uh, frames as the inventory item that we need to uh, make a purchase for. And then we'll say, maybe let's plan for 300 additional purchases um, in April. And then, um, you know, these inventory purchases may have impacts on our cash flow statement, um, not just our inventory management. So we have a payment term category here that we can select um, that will impact our cash flow. So from here, I'm going to save this row in the sheet. Um, And then we'll be able to see our trend um, update dynamically right after we've made that. And you can see that we're no longer tracking to have um, a shortage in April. Next for variable workforce, we have a model built um, where we can track we can track what the hours needed um, to produce each unit. So you can see we have the units projected to be sold. We have assumptions here for each employee type, how many hours are needed to um, manufacture that, those units, each unit. So that will multiply um, with our hours needed or, to give us sort of a full FTE needed for that month. So the real benefit, a huge benefit of, of demand planning is that you can, um, it allows you to do real strategic scenario planning. So instead of just saying, well, let's you know plan for a scenario where our revenue is 5% higher. Well, we can maybe say, let's plan for a scenario where um, we have, manufacturing efficiencies that can drive down the number of hours needed um, to produce each unit and see how that impacts um, our wage costs and our FTEs needed. So let's say, you know, maybe we're planning for um, some improvements in our assembly line that will only require maybe an hour and a half um, per unit. We can adjust that here. I'll right click to carry this forward through the plan and then save this sheet. And we can see the FTEs needed went down. Um, we can track our wages costs. Well, let's drill into this um, visualization and see of the 14, how many of each um, type are needed. So you can see we need nine assembly workers, three inspectors, and two supervisors. Um, and that will really help sort of the individual plant managers make sure that they have um, enough FTEs to fully meet the demand um, of their business.